Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Willem van der Brugge, and I'm the Secretary General of the Confederation of European Probation, CEP. We are delighted to have you here and participate in this webinar jointly organized with the Czech Probation and Mediation Service, PMS. The title of the webinar is called The Restoration of Normality, a year with COVID-19. And as we all know, it has been almost a year since COVID-19 crossed our lives and highly impacted our work in the field of probation. This webinar serves as a replacement for the postponed and fifth edition of the International Conference on Alternatives to Detention in Central and East European countries. And good to know is that PMS and CEP plan to hold this conference in Prague on the 11th till 13th of October this year. The event also celebrates the 20th anniversary of the Probation and Mediation Service. Congratulations, dear PMS colleagues, and be proud on what you have achieved in those 20 years. The aim of this webinar is to share information and knowledge from different European jurisdictions with a special focus on jurisdictions in Central and East European countries and provide participants with new experience and lessons learned in this first COVID year. We have presentations from the Czech Republic, Romania and Slovenia. Now something brief about CEP. The Confederation of European Probation, CEP, is a non-political, non-governmental organization which brings together probation services from around Europe. CEP currently has 35 countries in membership, of which 25 are EU member states, large and small, new and old, from north and south and east and west. In 1981, it was the number of foreign prisoners in Europe that gave 11 members, at that time Western European countries, cause to join forces and found CEP. CEP is the single largest European network organization for the sector of probation and community justice with the capacity to reach probation staff at both a managerial and an executive level, practitioners and middle managers. It includes academic and researchers in probation from all over Europe in its network both as individuals and as member universities and research institutes. CEP promotes pan-European cooperation in the development and delivery of community sanctions and measures. And all activities of CEP, from online, as we say nowadays, conferences and workshops, publications such as Probation in Europe, the CEP website and its newsletters, were all targeted to probation sector across all European jurisdictions specifically towards the member organizations. CEP has its headquarters in Utrecht. But let's go back to today's webinar. I hope you all downloaded the program. You can see that after each presentation, we take some time for questions and answers. There is even a coffee break halfway, but please ask your questions via the Q&A function. That's at the bottom of your screen. And good to know is that all sessions will be recorded and that we will publish the webinar materials on the CEP website and media for your reference. And now I'd like to hand over to Mrs. Andrea Matuskova, Director General of the Czech Probation and Mediation Service. And I want to say much more, once more on behalf of CEP, welcome to you all. Prepare yourself to be challenged, excited and inspired. Andrea, the floor is yours. I would like also uh, welcome you and uh, uh, say hello. And I would like to also uh, try to introduce myself and also a more a little bit a few minutes uh, during my presentation. But what I would like to say is that I'm happy that we are able to organize this webinar, which actually takes place on the first day of our conference, which used to be planned in April. But you know that COVID is here, so we are also in front of our computer just now. As Villa mentioned, it had been postponed, and I will take play, and and it will take place in October. And I hope that we will be together uh, in person in October here in Prague. 
Probation and Mediation Service joined the CEP in 2009, and I would like to say that we find this cooperation very fruitful and helpful because thanks to this network, we are able to get uh, in touch in colleagues like you and colleagues from all over the world and especially Europe. And uh, we share information, attend, in, uh, attend interesting conference, seminars, and also webinars like we have today. And I hope that we all will be able to meet in person in October, as I said. Lots of information, especially about our service, has already been mentioned by Willem. So thank you, Willem. And for example, you know that we celebrated 20 years this year. So uh, the conference in October is a part of our celebration. And uh, more I will go to say uh, in my presentation in a few minutes. Of course, feel free to ask and contact us and my colleague if you uh, would like to have more in the information on our service. My presentation is partly about my own experience from COVID time from last year and uh, also about our work as well. So, Willem, if you say yes, so let's start it, our webinars with my presentation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Um, I think it's the right time to start with your presentation. If you could share your screen. I hope. Yeah. So it's a lot. This is the last slide, I think, but okay. So it's better to start with this. Yeah, thank you. So. Uh, my name is Andrea Matoshkova, but from what I saw, I believe that we mostly know each other. For those to whom we never met, I've been working at probation and mediation service from its very beginning since 2001. After finishing my university social work studies at Faculty of Art in 1995, I was one of a few graduates who had made decision about own profession and started providing social work in criminal justice area. With my friends from the university, sorry. Yeah. With my friends from the university, we started working as first probation officers in Czech Republic. We worked at the courts because at that time probation and mediation had not institutional background in the Czech Republic. We were operating only in court cases of pre-sentence and post-sentence level of criminal proceedings. All this time we had many dreams, but the biggest one was to implement restorative approaches in the practice, victim offender mediation, restorative conferencing, victim work. But also we were thinking of the way how probation supervision could be provided restoratively. From the beginning, we have been building our organization at the Czech Republic as a service for offenders, victims, but also for community members like offenders and victims family. As you probably know, we built our organization with probation and mediation activities under one roof. My 25 years in probation and mediation practice included time when I was working in the first line as a caseworker, time when I was leading the department for methodological agenda at the headquarter of our service in Prague and the moment when I was appointed Director General of the service. In February this year, I celebrated five years as a Director General. Of course, position of the Director General goes hand in hand with enormous responsibility and you must be prepared for everything, like building up and motivating efficient team leading the managers, solving, solving unexpected client-related events and coping media pressure, 
presenting our work results in front of ministry, answering questions in front of politician committees and members of parliament, making many small but also big decisions affecting future of organization which more than 500 employees. I had many dreams as a director general and I still have them, but I never dreamt about COVID time. And I could, couldn't imagine how difficult and stressful it can be. But I recognize that COVID time can be also opportunity for development and test for us on how we are able to adapt the change to changes and use this new experience for the future. Last year, I got a new experience as a COVID-19 crisis manager, and I have learned a lot. So what was changed? From the left side, you can see a picture, an old town square in Prague, as we knew it before 2020. There are so many tourists who wanted to enjoy Prague and its beauties. It used to be our crowded with pantomime, performances, carriages, food stands. Right next to it, uh, to it, you see the same square in March 2020 during the first lockdown. From the left down, there is the photo from December 2020 with the Christmas tree and again empty square without Christmas markets and performances. The last picture on the right side is dated in March this year during the second lockdown. The empty square again without people, but with 25,000 painted crosses. The small white crosses painted on the walkway symbolize all death with COVID-19 in the Czech Republic. I have no doubt uh, doubt that everyone has already seen the same picture in their countries. I believe that we will see the photos from our cities with many people walking the street, sitting at cafes, visiting the historic moments again. In April this year, we have more than 28,000 deaths with COVID-19 in Czech Republic and still 5,000 patients at our hospitals. So what now to get back to 2020? What are we going to do was the question that kept occurring in my head. Even though we all read about coronavirus spreading in China, I believe that no one expected that it would hit the whole world with such strength. It seems unexpected and monstrous. And not only with it, its, its strength, extent, and speed, but it influenced both of our personal and professional lives. On my very strong memories, uh, one of my very strong memories is the night from 11 to 12 of March 2020, when we were preparing the organization measures for providing probation and mediation in COVID time. Even before it actually came here, we had to start making decisions and adopting new measures according to the instruction from the Ministry of Justice. We had some analysis, we read information from abroad, we were in touch with Ministry of Justice and especially with prison service. I can recall the moment when I returned from the Ministry of Justice Emergency Committee to my office and we have had to discuss with my team the situation. Personally, I have felt this moment and I remember, remember it to this day as a panic on the board. My team of five people was no unanimous. Uh, it means we were not on the same board at the moment. I had to listen to many different opinions and I have felt that we have no time for discussion. For some of them, it was just flu that would disappear, but for security reasons, they recommended me to take some measures to prevent it. 
For the others, it was disaster, and they suggest they suggested me to shut down everything and wait at home. Of course, we couldn't do this or that exactly, but we had to find suitable solution for this matter. We had to find proportion between the act of probation and mediation service and its duties, and our duty to protect health of our employees. Because of panic on board, I had to make final decisions and explain it to my team, our managers and our employees in front line and line as well. At the same situation, the other judicial bodies were like police, courts, prisons, state prosecutors, and they kept working. We had to ensure work with our clients whom we have known, and we had to register and start working with our new client, clients as well. Providing the probation and mediation never stopped it in the Czech Republic, but our professional approaches, how it can be executed had to be changed. So a little bit now uh, about our practice how it worked in practice and what was held for me. It's necessary to mention that from the very beginning, I attended emergency committee meetings held at the Ministry of Justice. What I find really important is that I was part of discussion and I had flat information from the state emergency committee. So we were able to create our internal, internal measures according to the current information from state level. We had also information on situation in justice department, especially on situation inside the prison service and courts. For me, it was important that the emergency committee members actually listen to our needs and also their views were inspiring. Of course, until 12 of March, we didn't know in advance which specific measures would pass the government. So in the end, we all had to wait for the press conference during the night from 11 to 12 of March, read official information, and then during the very short time, during the rest of night, we had to act and prepare our instruction for employees. We adopted new measures in compliance with the government measures, and I will talk about it in a few minutes. At the beginning, there was no particular state level crisis plan. What happens if there are more than 1,000 infected? What happens if hospitals are full? We only knew that what was important is to protect our staff, but kept working. So we had to set up the priorities for providing probation and mediation, define what is necessary, what is deferable, what we have to stop. In September, we also created a five degree internal regime measures and we call it COVID action plan in English CAT. And you know that CAT is also CAT, and CAT is CAT. This plan covers rules for our internal and external communication, both face-to-face -face and via telephone, email, social networks, then rules for providing probation and mediation activities with the clients, both in the office and in the in the field, as we call. So it means during the community service or home arrest check. Rules for alcohol and drug testing, hygienic measures for COVID testing rules adopted in the office. In November 2020, the Ministry of Health also prepared a five degree regime table, so called PASS in Czech in English anti-epidemic system. This table presents the rules for public behavior, security of breathings, restriction for mobility, public operating, including rules for school, hospitals, restaurants, and etc. What is funny now is that PES in Czech means a dog in English. 
So it means that cat and dog are also are participating in fight against the COVID-19 actively in the Czech Republic. As for uh, the our probation and mediation centers, within, within a couple of hours, we adopted new methodological rules on probation and mediation agenda implemented during the COVID-19 outbreak. We had to evaluate whether the scheduled activities, both at the service centers and in the field, didn't pose a risk to the staff. And if yes, we had to, in accordance with our methodological standards, evaluate whether these activities were necessary to be carried out. Each agenda was assessed uh, in individual manner and with respect to current state of condition. I believe that this is the same as everywhere, so you can imagine it in details. We cut in regular operating hours for our centers and teams of our employees at all service centers and also here in the headquarter in Prague were split to two or more groups. We implemented new organization model and we shifting working at office with home work. We closed our doors for unannounced visitors, but if probation officers evaluated the high risk of reoffending, they were meeting clients face to face. In some cases, we replaced face-to-face -face consultation by other types of communication, by phone, email, video conferencing. And in short time, we had to equip our staff with IT technology. Given the fact that at our centers, we carry out alcohol and drug testing, the workplace hygiene procedures, and other safety instructions were on the high level even before the crisis. The service had a stockpile of head sanitizers, which was distributed to service centers. But we had no face masks, respirators, and we have left lack of these very important protective tools. So nervousness was omnipresent, not only at our offices, but in our family as well, as well. This type of protection we felt in Czech Republic as important in spite of discussion of their efficiency across the European countries at that time. We started wearing and stitching face masks for us and also for our friends and colleagues. Initial shortage of face masks was covered by homemade production of the probation staff. These masks were then distributed to other service centers as well as to the hospitals, home, homes for elderly, social care centers, juvenile centers, and etc. I still can recall the moment, and Villa knows it, when we zoomed with CEP and we were sitting in front of the camera and had face mask on. From the very beginning, I paid very close attention to internal communication. I wrote regular páteční okénko. It's really nice in Czech, páteční okénko. Emails sent on Friday informing the probation staff about current developments adapted measures and protocols, as well as some supporting words for my staff in order to cope with temporary changes to operating procedures. I wrote about current situation. I explained the protective and restrictive measures. I tried to motivate and support. I wrote about my own experience and understanding, understanding of worries and hopelessness. We had first experience with quarantine and COVID illness of our colleagues and relatives, and unfortunately with the death on this sickness. As for the external communication, of course, journalists, but also more importantly, our clients needed to know what would happen next. 
On our website and social sites, we regularly release information about service centers, operating hours, contacts with probation officers, face-to-face -face meetings and its new rules, and many others. Of course, our probation officers called their clients, they rescheduled meetings, carry out consultations, wrote down the reports for the courts. A little bit about our agenda. I will not elaborate an all agenda in 2020, but what uh, has already been mentioned is that we never shut down our service centers. We have 74 of them and nearly 600 employees, out of which 500 probation officers at the service centers. During last year, we regularly conducted various internal researches on the state of our agenda. Special attention was paid to community service. We have had nearly 7,000 clients serving the community service. We have more than 6,500 community service providers, but of course, not all of them are active. I'm very glad that, this, that despite the very first panic, our community service providers were willing to enable our clients to serve their sentence during the state of emergency. In March, there were more than 300 uh, community service providers enabling to serve the sentence. In April, more than 400. In May, more than 1,000. And in November last year, more than 1,600. To compare it to those who were not able to accept clients, the end of March, it was 1,400. And November, it was uh, in nearly 300. In November, there were only 100 clients out of 7,000 who were unable to continue serving their uh, community sentence because of health, current time, or illness. In March, it was uh, 300 clients. So as you can, the difference between those were unable to serve the community sanction in March and November compared to total number of clients. We were able, uh, even this situation, we were able to create uh, 60 new places of community service for our clients. And for example, it was in one of our cities, uh, a new cooperation with the home for elderly people was established. Our client wanted to help and the home staff really appreciated that opportunity as they were unable to further provide care services as they have struggled with lack of staff and volunteer, volunteers. So in the end, there is a happy ending there. We were also interested in how many face-to-face -face meetings were held uh, at our centers. So we know that in November, it was 49% face-to-face meetings compared to 66% phone uh, sessions and uh, emails. Both in November and March 2020, we were under the state of emergency. And as you can see, in nearly 50% cases, we hold face-to-face -face meetings as there was the end to meet clients in person. We also conducted a short research among our staff on the topic in June 2020. Nearly 60% of our staff said that their contact with clients did not change. In 36% it got worse and in 4% it got better. Of course, the phone conversation cannot replace the face-to-face -face one, but there were some cases in which the client was more open and shared more detailed information from his life and the contact became more intensive.
So what's next? The conference in Prague, I hope, of course. But what I would like to say as conclusion of my presentation, what I'm proud of is that we all managed to survive the very first moment. And uh, I am proud of my staff who have worked hard. We support each other. We try to help female probation officers with children at homeschooling. I appreciate that our employees were courageous to face the COVID situation. And after managing the first moment called as panic on the board, they were ready to manage many difficult situations. Of course, I have also experienced with emails from my staff, like why we don't have this or that, why we don't stop visiting our clients at home, why we have no priority vaccinations. From my view, there is only one way how to face situations like COVID-19 successfully, to have right information at the right moment to explain what is necessary and what is important, to communicate quickly, regularly, and be understandable, to have courage to make decisions, to be ready carrying the responsibility, and to, re uh, to be ready repairing the mistakes because things sometimes doesn't go as you would like to. So this is all, that's it and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Andrea, for this uh, excellent presentation. Very interesting. Uh, I want to thank you for this opportunity to be, uh, to be here with, uh, with all coincidence or not, our probation system will celebrate this year 20 years, like uh, our colleagues from Czech uh, system. In September this year, we hope to have enough time and inspiration to prepare an um, uh, um, interesting celebration. Uh, and um, we'll see. Uh, my name is Ramona Bolic. I'm actually I'm Deputy Director General within Romanian Probation uh, uh, Directorate. I come here with my colleagues, one of my colleagues involved in this project, Marian Badia. Uh, probation inspector working for um, um, research and um, strategic department. Uh, in fact, uh, my colleagues, Marianne, started uh, this project and sustained this project. Our presentation is about uh, new slide, please. New slide. Next slide. Next slide. Our presentation is about. Um, uh, the prevention program for um, probationers which have com committed for uh, road traffic offenses, namely stop the road traffic offenses. And uh, I uh, will uh, invite Marian to present the context of the elaboration of this uh, program. Let me say hello to everybody and to thank you for this opportunity to take part in, uh, to this event. Marianne, speak a bit louder, please. Yes. I have to, to send congratulations for the 20 year activity of our colleagues from the Czech Probation and Mediation Service. And as uh, Ramona said, Probably if we be in a, a safety condition, we will invite you in autumn for our 20 year celebration. Uh, I'll try to offer some general information regarding the development of this program. It is a very specific program dedicated to the probationers convicted for road traffic offenses. Probably you will ask, uh, you are asking why this program in, uh, uh, in our endeavor to, to answer to this possible uh, question will offer uh, a uh, synthesis. Uh, 
for a better understanding of the context in which we uh, we develop this program, it uh, would probably be useful to take a look at this image. It, uh, it is a representation of the percent of the road traffic offenses taking into consideration the entire stock of probationers. It's a um, synthesis over 10 years from 2009 until 2019. Um, and uh, we, we observe two turning points in 2010. It was introduced the special procedure of guilty plea in Romania with a slightly effect, a slightly increase in our proportion, proportion of the road traffic offenses. The dramatic uh, turning point, it was in 2014 when it came into force the new criminal code. And in the same time, the conditional suspension of the sentence was um, abolished. This was the context when we discovered that uh, not in prison, not in probation, where uh, a lot of uh, uh, people convicted for road traffic offenses. After 2014, they are coming into probation following uh, uh, two ways as a uh, suspension of the supervision under the supervision of probation or um, um, another alternative uh, uh, in the pro uh, under the probation responsibility. Beyond the representation, uh, now we have to say, now we, um, our colleagues, are working with almost 34, 35,000 probationers convicted for road traffic offenses. So uh, it is a dramatic change uh, of the general profile of our probationer. Now, half of the entire stock of probationers are convicted for road traffic offenses. That's why we are trying to, de uh, to, to develop our first in-house uh, program, uh, a program dedicated for these uh, specific offenders convicted for road, road traffic offenses. Please, uh, if it is possible, the next slide to see. Thank you. Beyond the representation are tragic facts. For a long time, Romania has recorded an, impression, an impressive ratio of fatalities per million inhabitants. As you can see in, in this image, uh, uh, as well uh, uh, in a comparative way in the, in the European context. If it is possible, the next slide, please. Thank you. The generic category of road traffic offenders as the, the most common um, crimes we can uh, uh, observe uh, driving a vehicle under the influence of alcohol or other substances an offense uh, almost always uh, treated with a drink and drive program. We have also a lot of driving uh, a vehicle without a driving license. And probably this is the place where the new, our, our new program, Stop the Road Accident, is uh, appropriate. But we have to say, in practice, we don't have, we, uh, we have a lot of cases uh, with uh, multiple um, offenses. So 
so we can uh, we are we have to work with um, persons convicted for driving a vehicle without a driving without without a driving license, but associated uh, uh, often with uh, bodily harm or uh, manslaughter, or even with uh, uh, driving a vehicle under the influence. The next, the next slide, please. We can uh, see some details regarding one of the most frequent uh, offenses, driving a vehicle under the influence. Here it is uh, the reference of the, to the alcohol concentration in Romania is uh, 0 0.8 gram per liter. The next slide, please. This is the place where uh, the special procedure of guilty plea uh, action with uh, the effect of uh, rising the caseload in uh, probation services, in probation uh, offices. Next slide, please. The other most frequent, frequent um, offenses. Uh, it's, it is represented by driving a vehicle without, without a driving license. Next slide, please. It is the same situation, the special procedure of guilty plea uh, cause a uh, special effect for us, the, the increase of the caseload with such a cases. Now we have to say uh, that we are in the process, after six months of uh, piloting uh, the program, we are in the process of evaluating the first results uh, of applying in the over 20, 25, I think, um, probation offices. We, and we are following the principle of effective intervention, taking into consideration that we are using um, uh, scale of the evaluation of risk and needs developed with the contribution of uh, Canadian experts. So we can, we, we can, um, use this um, uh, uh, tool to focus this program on the uh, person, probationers with uh, medium or low medium risk of uh, recidivism. Well, uh, with this uh, contextual information at hand, uh, Probably Ramona will uh, detail the important aspect of the program Stop the Road Traffic Offenses. Thank you. Next, next uh, slide, please. Yeah. Oh, no, previous, sorry. The main stages in developing this program was the first stage in 2015. Uh, um, this type of specific intervention was initiated by Cluj Probation Office uh, together with the uh, local police. Uh, between 2016-2018, the this initiative was extended into 12 probation offices. In 2018, study and st a study regarding this new main group of probation Romanian probationers was presented to, at the annual conference of European uh, Society of Criminology. And uh, between uh, 2018 and 2020, we designed our first in-house program. Collecting this experience, our methodological and training department and research and strategic development department, uh, together with local probation officer and uh, representative for police, police, central police, 
and non-governmental organization working together to design a multimodal program, prevention program. Next, please. Between August and September 2020, we uh, delivered with, uh, uh, six online training sessions and three face-to-face uh, -face training sessions for 145 probation counselors. And we start in, in October 2020, uh, the pilot piloting stage of this program. Uh, from our statistic at this moment, but we don't finish the piloting stage, uh, we have um, 521 probationers have completed the basic module of the program. I will talk later about the structure of the program. The basic model was completed and uh, 38 probationers have abandoned the, the program. We uh, will gather in the information about all these cases and uh, to the of the end of the April and we'll uh, um, analyze the, the situation in every cases to see what happened, what the progressive was this, what they failed, and so on. The next slide is about some pictures with us in online training and uh, during the training session online on face-to-face. -face. Targeting, target staff training, the next, please. This program is designed to be applied by mixed teams of tutors. Probation counselor, traffic police officer, prevention criminality analyst, or other guests from community. Uh, our uh, training modality was uh, delivering training one to one to one online training for our staff using Microsoft Team platform and additional um, in um, learning by doing the manner. Our trainers train the partners to work together. And another modality was to have the common courses, uh, courses training for uh, the team of program two source for all the team, probation counselor, traffic officer, and prevention you know, criminality analyst. This was possible uh, only for face-to-face uh, -face, uh, training session because the police um, staff uh, can have access to our platform. Microsoft Team platform um, using by uh, Minister of Justice, or they don't have, uh, um, they have permission to access some online platform, online platform. It uh, was difficult to put together our, um, um, our specialist, our staff for one online training, but was possible to face to face. So we use this modality. The next, please. The structure of the program. The basic model of the program is mandatory and contained for session. Um, that aim to support the participant to obtain information regarding the traffic legislation, local statistic about uh, um, accidents, uh, the condition for getting back the driving license uh, to analyze and to understand the mechanism of uh, behavior and to and uh, the decisional decisional process of the uh, on the road by analyze something uh, analyze some accidents events from traffic to be aware to the favorable factor for crimes relating with the road traffic safety and develop these abilities to control this factor. Uh, the basic model was an important part of the training delivered by us. The, to the, this model, basic model, can add one or more optional models like some, such as uh, offenses, deep analysis, 
the victim perspective, preparatory action for victim and community, road traffic forces, like legislation or driving, uh, uh, preventive driving. At this moment, we have developed just one optional model, um, namely offenses deep analysis. This was a, a second part of the training delivered. Next. And next, we talk about this. Next, please. Yes, the training session proposed an interactive or and dynamic atmosphere with various films, reels, scenes for traffic, live experience, confession of ex probationer um, proposed to be shared, analyzed, and debated during the training as. Um, during the delivering the program. Confession of the ex probationers live or recorded was well received and engaged with new experience. We start with the probationer or ex probationer was invited to share with the group their experience. Other interesting practice during the piloting of this uh, program was uh, the experience uh, of an, a lawyer convicted for um, this kind of offense, telling his story, an actor who retailed the story of one of our ex probationer and this aspect seems to be explored, more explored and developed in our pilot. We use traffic lights in synergy with CBT methods. You know, uh, the green, it's, it's nothing happened. The, red, uh, the um, yellow, when you are in the uh, under risk to, to happen, the, and red, when it happened. And you can stop, you can change anything will be happening. So we focus on the yellow, yellow moments to, uh, to focus, to uh, discuss how we can change what happens, what we think, what we act in this uh, in this moment, in that moment. Uh, the algorithm of presentation of the cases was usually the same, starting in a neutral manner, such event, um, traffic event or short film, and discuss about this after uh, we. Uh, go for the subject uh, personal point of view, uh, focus on their own offenses. So we, um, it's like an ice breaking, we discuss and we see all what happened in the neutral cases and then we analyze our offenses. And the next, Thank you. Some feedback about our training, the training atmosphere. Uh, one of our colleagues said that physic, I was far away, but affectively and intellectual, I was in the class. IT, they appreciate, they really appreciate the IT support and this initiative for online training. The adaptation of this program to the real um, need of the probation services, the collaboration of the tutors who come from different institutions in delivering this program, interactivity uh, and open community, between, uh, community communication between trainers and trainees. Of course, most of the participants of uh, at online uh, session express the lack of the role playing and the practice between um, uh, participants to, to exercise this, uh, this session. Thank you. And okay, thank you, Romana. Thank you, Marian, for uh, this interesting presentation. So I was invited to present um, how transition from prison to probation works in Slovenia during the, uh, during the epidemic. So I will share my um, 
very short and very simple uh, PowerPoint. Just a sec, I hope that you see it now. Yes, we can see it. Good. So, um, maybe just um, a brief, um, a brief or, or a wider picture. So, um, as elsewhere in Europe, uh, the Slovenia faced an epidemic in March 2020. Officially, an epidemic was declared on 12th of March. But regardless to this um, uh, declaration, we already imposed some measures, uh, mostly preventive measures, safety measures, uh, uh, in, in the second half of the February. So the, the Ministry of Justice has accepted a few recommendations uh, that was, of course, led by National Institute of Public Health. Uh, so we already started with some preventive measures. Um, the, the, the situation in Slovenia in the first way was not bad. Uh, we had really low number of um, uh, corona cases, really low. Uh, nothing to compare it to now, nowadays situation, which is not so good as the first wave. Uh, so some of the measures were taken um, in the uh, first two weeks of March. And then on 12th of March, after the Slovenia, the Slovenian government declared an epidemic. Also within the Slovenian probation administration, um, we took uh, some measures uh, regarding, of course, all preventive measures and what was going on in the country. So basically, uh, there were two levels of adopting measures. One is the national level and one is the level of, um, of the service, our service. So whenever we updated our measures, uh, we based on them on what national measures were. So we tried to um, uh, involve all those measures into our measures. So in a way I can, present two different um, periods and of course, two different um, experiences within COVID. So in a, in a first wave, so when in a time when, it, when we didn't know nothing about Corona, uh, how to deal with it, uh, how will spread, what will be the consequences, how to do, basically Slovenia stopped. I think that you, uh, you have pretty much the same um, experiences. So basically the life in Slovenia stopped. We had only a few cases. The maximum number per day was the highest number in the first wave of epidemic was 60, I think, or maybe 90 cases, but it was really low number compared to the Europe. Um, and we stopped, we stopped everything. So we didn't have any direct contacts with probationers from 1st of April till 18th of May. Uh, all the contacts were uh, via telephone. Uh, in some cases where the probationers had smartphones, we used applications like WhatsApp or Viber or Skype dependent on the probationer's uh, equipment and how he was able, of course, to use it. Um, we faced the, the fact that most of organizations where the community sentences were carried out closed, uh, the same, like the whole country closed. So we had problems uh, with executing probation tests. Therefore, on the national level, we accepted a law which said that the, the, the dues, uh, so the period uh, within a uh, probationer has to fulfill uh, his or her obligation uh, was not running. So this was the period where stopped and he had the chance to continue with the probation tax after, uh, after the, 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 um, the, the epidemic was uh, declared. Uh, so um, on the second wave, so on the first wave, basically only phone calls, no personal contacts uh, and for all, probation tax for who we received uh, 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 an official act, 
uh, we didn't invite probationers to the probation unit. We waited for the time where they would uh, be invited for the first time at the unit. So that was happening after the 18th of March of uh, May. But the first wave, um, we learned a lot from the first wave, uh, not just the probation unit, but also the community, uh, the organizations where the community service is taken. So um, the second wave was different. Uh, the second uh, epidemic was declared in Slovenia uh, on 19th of October. Um, the first one ended uh, on, uh, I think, by end of the May. It ended, so it lasted two months and a half. And then there was a, a, a period without an epidemia and also with really low number of uh, cases. And then in autumn, the cases started to raise dramatically in Slovenia, really dramatically. So if you said that the maximum in the first wave was 90, uh, the maximum in the second wave was almost 4,000. So you can imagine the difference uh, in cases. But even though we had a lot of uh, corona cases in the country, um, our uh, attitudes toward, toward our work and toward probationer changed. Why? Because we saw in the first wave, even though it took only one month and a half without any personal contact face to face, uh, we have seen that our probationers face with a lot of um, anxiety, with a lot of problems, uh, they didn't uh, find any help or support within the community. Uh, so they expressed a lot the need to have a face-to-face -face contact. So when we faced an epidemia in October 2020, we said, okay, we should rethink what was going on and what can we change? So we decided that we will not abandon face-to-face uh, -face meetings with our, our clients, but we said, we will keep face-to-face -face meetings with all the clients who need it. So that were, that were mostly the clients with um, custodial supervision and the clients who had, um, uh, and the clients where we noticed uh, uh, an increase of anxiety and problems. So with those probationers, we kept face-to-face uh, -face, uh, contacts uh, with the clients who were in probation because Miss Medimers, we said, okay, the phone call is enough, uh, a visit if necessary in an institution is also enough, otherwise we didn't invite them. And uh, if we compare the first and the second wave, in the second wave, we decided that we will in invite to the first interview of newcomers uh, regularly. Of course, we, uh, were, uh, we obeyed all the safety measures. So we somehow, we, we wrote the rules about how the contacts were going on at the unit. So we had um, much more time in between one and the, the second contact uh, to, to, to uh, to for fresh air of the of the room to to use the the disinfection um, disinfections uh, to uh, the the interviews didn't prolong, which meant if you made a reservation for half an hour of interview, it was maximum half an hour. So we didn't prolong it. So nobody waited, and all the probationers were right, invited exactly on time. And therefore, we kept face-to-face -face meetings at the union during all the second wave of epidemia, even now. Uh, and I must say that we don't face uh, uh, a huge number of cases among the staff. Uh, the most at the central unit, we got uh, corona and we don't have contacts with persons and really low, low number of our other colleagues from other units. So because of this, our decision that we will keep face-to-face -face meetings, we didn't face, uh, face the increase of uh, corona cases, which is good because even though that we kept face-to-face um, -face meetings, 
uh, we get information from probationers that they need us, that, they, that, that the, the phone call is just not enough. So if I this split now to, to, to transition from prison to, um, from prison to probation, uh, Slovenia on a, like, uh, on a national level accepted a few legislations, a few acts regarding who tackled the problems about the prison population. Uh, so in the first wave, a lot of prisoners were temporarily released uh, in epidemia time, so that was an objective reason why the uh, prisoner uh, could be temporarily released. And in the second wave, uh, the, the legislation said that they will not execute prison sentences who are not necessary. So they postponed the, the, the starting day of the serving the prison sentence. So on a national level, we had uh, we tackled those problems and tried to think about the population with whom we work. So if I compare now probation and prison, the first wave, uh, our role and our work with probationers in the first wave, wave was also different as it is now in the second wave. In the first wave, basically nothing changed. So um, Andrea said, that they uh, didn't go to prisons, they didn't have uh, physical contacts with prisoners. That not happened in Slovenia. So in case if, uh, uh, so the prison and probation service cooperate in the process of planning uh, a release on parole with custodial supervision. So this is the part where we somehow cross our, uh, our responsibilities. So whenever we received an invitation from prison, to come to prison uh, to, uh, to cooperate in planning of uh, parole release, we did it. And all these meetings were, uh, were taken in prison, in life, either uh, in a big room or uh, in an office of a, a counselor in the prison. Of course, we obeyed all safety measures, mask, disinfection, appropriate distance, uh, fresh air, everything. It was uh, 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 everything was uh, abated. In the second wave, um, since we learned a lot from the first wave, we said, okay, we should rethink what can we do. And the prison system, in this period in between, from the first wave and then in the in the period of peace, if I can say it like that. The prison system upgraded uh, their equipment, uh, so they uh, got the chance to have video calls, video conferences. So uh, when we started to plan a release on Polar in the second wave, uh, we said, okay, we, we have our uh, opportunity, opportunities to do in three ways. Either, uh, either in life in prison, which is that green picture um, here, or at the probation unit. So uh, if this happened, the probation officers uh, agreed with um, a prison counselor the, the time and the hour and the date when a prisoner should come to the probation unit. Uh, in some cases, the prisoner had uh, a leave with purpose, which is possible by Slovenian legislation, or he did uh, come to the unit when he was uh, on free leave out of the, the prison. So uh, they came either to the probation unit, so the probation officer could have an interview with the prison, prisoner. He explained what uh, are his responsibilities um, in, in period when he is on parole release and how will probation tax will be carried out. So this is, these are the crucial information that probation officers gives to prisoner. So he does an interview. Uh, he tries to, to see what are the crucial problems with, uh, with uh, what crucial problems does prisoner have. So he can um, suggest instructions to prison. What instructions should be uh, also be pronounced when uh, custodial supervision is pronounced. And then he explains all the process. And in some cases where it was not possible to go to on leave from prison uh, and not to come to the unit, 
we used video conference call within the prison and everything was settled, uh, of course, in advance. Um, in between um, prison administration and probation administration signed a protocol of cooperation between, between those two administrations. Uh, the main goal of uh, this protocol was to strengthen uh, our cooperation uh, in uh, with, uh, uh, our cooperation. And the second one was to encourage uh, to, uh, the committee uh, for parole release to, uh, to impose more parole releases with custodial supervision because the numbers of these cases uh, are, um, are low in Slovenia. So the, the, the reason for assignment of this protocol was to strengthen this and uh, try to present to the committee and also to the public that uh, the parole release with custodial supervision can be one really good and important part of uh, social inclusion of prisoner, of an offender um, into the society while serving the sentence and after the sentence is served. Uh, so, um, Oops, sorry, uh, like this. So in practice, basically nothing changed for the probation officers or for the probationers when a prisoner was released on parole with custodial supervision. So he received an invitation for first interview with exact uh, date, uh, time, the hours when uh, he should uh, come to the unit. Uh, the probation officer um, checked what instructions, if any, were also pronounced, did an interview with a probationer, they did uh, a plan how the, the probation test will be carried out. Uh, in mostly, um, if we look at the statistics, half half cases, we have custodial supervision with instructions. And usually, if instructions are pronounced, this means that uh, probationers have to go to alcohol or drug treatment or to visit um, psychological or psychiatric uh, or any other sessions. Uh, and in some cases, um, they should attend vocational training or employment. Uh, so the half half of the numbers that we uh, received to, to the probation were with instructions and without. So for the probation officer, uh, he did in life, face to face, this interview, he planned everything. Uh, the experience shows that probationers mostly, uh, mostly fulfilled uh, their responsibilities. So they, they did not try to find ways how to go away from the responsibility, but they were, um, they were cooperative a lot. In just a few cases, we noticed that a few of them tried to uh, abuse the situation. Uh, if we are looking from the point of probation administration, we had problems with organizations where uh, instructions could be carried out because health institutions who carry out for drug and alcohol treatment basically closed. So they didn't uh, take any special treatments. So we faced either with a long uh, waiting queue or they didn't accept uh, a probationer or they have uh, a special program on the phone and everybody knows that a special treatment for um, alcohol and drug cannot be held on the phone. So we face these problems because a lot of uh, institutions uh, shut, uh, shut down. Uh, I must say, if I compare the first and the second period, the, the second period is much better. So the, 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 the closing is not so big as it was in the first wave because in the first wave, basically everything stopped. In the second wave, everybody said, okay, we will rethink what can we do, in what amount we are able to do it, and when we will do it. So everybody somehow 
try to find solutions for for the situations so the the the, the problems uh, you see that guy who is like this uh were, were these how to to fulfill the obligations uh regarding to instructions uh despite that um, probation officers kept personal meetings with probationers so face to face they were reduced uh, by our legislation uh, probation officers um, must have at least two face-to-face -face meetings per month with a probationer this is minimum uh, it can be much more depends on the uh, on the estimation of a, a probation officer uh, so the the face-to-face -face context reduced and the one the ones who were uh, reduced they were um, uh, taken by uh, Viber or WhatsApp, so they try to have as much as possible um, video calls with probationers, and in some cases they communicated uh, via just a, a normal phone or normal um, uh, or mobile uh, phone. Um, then um, we face problems with psychiatric um, treatment. Uh, a lot of psychiatric hospitals, they didn't admit new persons because a lot of, uh, I think that this is the situation the same in most countries. A lot of people faced anxiety, uh, fear, so they needed a psychiatric help. So they just, they didn't have, have either time or space uh, to admit a probationer. So this uh, is our main problem at the moment so the organizations who are not able because of the the situation in slovenia to carry out um everything um in a statistical way uh i must say that um it's not the same situation as it is in for example in in in, in czech republic because uh our caseload, our caseload did uh, get lower, but not because we received less probation tasks, but because we employed more probation officers. Uh, if we compare, for example, 2019 and 2020, only 200 probation tasks were less in 2020 compared to 2019, which is uh, maybe 10% of all uh, probation tests. And it's not such a decrease, but on a level of uh, tests who were carried out or were in carrying out, uh, we, got, uh, we had even a higher number in 2020 than in 2019. So therefore our caseload uh, didn't uh, decrease. I think that this is because we are a very young service, only three years, uh, and um, everybody has a lot of expectations, a lot of probation uh, tasks take more than a year because by Slovenia legislation, you can have a community uh, work for two years, for example, uh, and the parole release can take years. So from year to year, we pass some tasks and we, can be every year, of course, we receive a new task. And the difference in new received tasks is not very high, only 200, less than 200. Um, uh, so, but we think because this is because we are the young service, um, not because um, courts start working. I think that it will happen the same as Milan said, uh, that after epidemic finishes, I think that we will also face a huge increase of probation tasks because courts will start to, to do uh, uh, on a high level speed. Um, regarding to transition from, from prison to, to probation, so we have two, two, two tasks. One is to plan and one is to execute afterwards. If I compare the 2019, 2020, uh, we can see that we received um, less requirements for planning in 2020 
than in 2019, and the same, uh, a less number, uh, a lower number of prisoners uh, were on parole release with custodial supervision in 2020 compared to 2019, which we think is uh, combined with um, uh, that possibility of temporary release and uh, the possibility of early release, who, was, uh, who is uh, in uh, discretion of the director of the prison to decide. We also uh, prolong the period. Uh, if usually the director can uh, shorten the sentence up to three months, the, the a special legislation regarding to COVID said, okay, the director can uh, release or release a prisoner up to six months. So we, we think that these lower numbers uh, is uh, dependent on this situation because directors uh, rather use the possibility for early release and not for low release, where there was, of course, a possibility. And also, in some cases, the COVID was the reason why, uh, uh, why we didn't, um, why the numbers are lower than in 2019. Um, Daniela, can you, uh, you have two I more minutes finished. or one more minute? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I just finished. So I just wanted to, to say the last sentence. Um, we will see what will future bring. We, we think that um, after <clears throat> this, the second wave finishes, that we will also face a huge increase of all probation tasks, which will lead to other problems, whether the institutions will be able to uh, to carry out everything and we will see what the future will bring. But even though we learned a lot, we use now other techniques, methods who weren't used before, but nevertheless, I must say, Willa knows uh, that nothing, nothing can, uh, can uh, change personal, uh, personal contact um, with a, um, video call or something like this. So I, we really hope that the future will give us back our old life, that we will go back to normal as we know it, uh, maybe in some adaptions, but okay, mostly as we know it. Okay, thank you very much, Daniela, for this inspiring presentation. Um,